station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We are ready. ESA, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. European Space Agency, this is Luca on board the station. How do you read me? How do you see me? We see you very well, Luca, and hear you uh, loud and clear. I hand the mic over to Enrico Sagesa. Ciao, Luca. Ti vediamo benissimo. Vediamo ancora sul tuo viso. We can still see on your face the same joy with which you came to station. We have more than 30 people here who are very interested to hear your first impressions of these first few days. So I will pass the microphone on. Have a good day and have fun with us. Hi, Luca. I'm Enrica Battifoglia from uh, ANSA Agency, the ATV vehicle. Albert Einstein is en route to the uh, space station, and I wanted to ask you if this arrival will result into an extra um, extravehicular activity. Hello, everyone. Hi, Enrica. As far as I know, for now, everything is going on track. ATV is working as it's supposed to, so there are no plans for any EVAs. The ATV is a completely independent vehicle. It works like a robot on its own and uh, we will monitor its approach and finally its dock uh, to the station. Hi, Luca, this is uh, Massimiliano Zampini from uh, Solo 24 Ore. Before you left, you answered a question for me that you felt a great responsibility about this mission, um, particularly because of the uh, crisis that's uh, undergoing in Italy. You're going to be gone for six months, which actually are not very many, considering what's going on in Italy at the time. So what would you like to find that has changed in Italy when you come back? As you said, six months feel like a long time, but, but they go by very quickly. In fact, time is already flying. It's already been a week and it feels like a day. What would I like to find? I would just like to find one thing, that our great country, our great Italy, I wish that it may find its way to go forth. I believe that at this time the word harmony is what we need to look for within our country and in the rest of the world. Hi, Luca. Marilu Lucrezio of TG1. I would like to know, how do you pass your days on board the uh, International Space Station? And what issues have you experienced regarding uh, the absence of gravity and things that are flying around? And what does that, that all entail? Days on board of the station are very, very intense. That's why time seems to fly so quickly. So we uh, get up at 6 a.m., we use Greenwich Mean Time. So we start prep activities. And we set up uh, experiments and physical activities. We usually work about eight hours a day. And then we have a couple of hours of physical activities that are mandatory. And then we... Uh, work on many experiments, and the rest is, is maintenance activities on the station. The difficulties, honestly, everything is a lot easier. 
you need to be careful where you attach things, where you place things, because in every dimension it's possible to find something. And so you can lose objects and instruments. And, but I've been doing well as far as adapting. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. I've had very few problems with adapting. So I'm, I'm extremely happy to be here. What are the moments? the most beautiful and the least pleasant that you have experienced on this mission. Surely one of the moments that I remember with the most joy is opening the door from Soyuz into the station. It's been a very emotional moment to come with the colleagues with whom I will spend the next four months. But this, this intense emotion of entering into the structure of the space station, I was curious to see our labs Many, the, many of these elements were built in Italy, so definitely a great emotion. The ugliest moment, honestly, I couldn't say, because until now it's been a great adventure. Hi, Luca, Marta Mellis from uh, TG24. I would like to know a little bit more about your adaptation time in these times, in, in these 10 days. What's it like to not use your legs and what's it like to be up there looking at the earth? <laughs> the answer that it's sim simply fantastic. I, I couldn't describe. You, you would need a poet or a, or a writer to be able to describe what you're, what you're experiencing, this, this feeling of being able to move in four dimensions. For me, adaptation has been understanding what the various spaces are but aside from that, there hasn't been a problem with adapting. As far as looking out to the, to the world from the window, from this viewpoint that is so special, seeing how planet Earth is so fragile with its thin atmosphere and looking at, at its incredible beauty, it has been absolutely extraordinary. And, and talking about my spirit, it, it elevates it. And Hi, Luca. Valentina Antonello from Brain News 24. On the 16th, you will be conducting a spacewalk. How are you preparing for this adventure and what do you expect? Surely it will be a very important undertaking. Extravehicular activities are complex operations and it's necessary to have a lot of training. Now, it's, it's many months that I've spent in the spacesuit and now it will be conducted as a real activity. I'm excited. My focus will be on the procedures so that I can complete my task. Fortunately, with me I will have a very experienced colleague who uh, just a few weeks ago he completed his fourth EVA. So I will be open to everything he'll be able to tell me. So that I will be able to create new memories. As far as for Italy, this is an important moment. So that this is a very important step for us to evolve. 
E ciao Luca, sono Paolo di Civitti. Hi Luca, Paolo di Civitti of Messaggero. Ever since you were a child, you dreamt about being an astronaut. So even for those looking at you from there, are you starting to see something? No, purtroppo c'è stata una, una, una piccola caduta di segnale. Puoi ripetere la domanda? Uh, unfortunately, I lost the signal. Can you repeat, please? Hi, Luca. You said that ever since you were a child, you dreamt about being an astronaut. Also, to understand who's looking down at us from above, are you starting to see something? Ma io vedo. Vedo tutto continuamente, guardo, eh, guardo fuori da eh, ogni momento. I see everything all the time. Appositamente qui in orbita non, non, I, I look out non ho portato at every free time that I have. E semplicemente vorrei poter guardare ogni momento libero, guardare fuori alla finestra e ammirare. I didn't bring any activities that may distract me because at any time I would like to be able to look out. Di quello che di quello che nostro So it's, it's an ongoing discovery. E poi of our planet and its marvels. And then, this is a particular time in our orbit, one of the phenomena that we can see are the uh, northern lights. So right now they're like apparitions in the sky. So this is something that even in my dreams I couldn't have expected. Hi, Giulia Bianconeri from The Time. I would like to know if, if now there is something that you would have wanted to bring that you didn't, and if there is something that you would like to take home from space. For now, after a week, I have to say that I'm not missing anything yet. Well, maybe a little uh, one-shot espresso. But here on station, there is nothing that I, I miss, I feel like at home. As far as bringing back, if there was a way to bring the sense of unity and freedom that we feel on station. Hi, Alessandra D'Angelo from uh, Radio Rai. I'd like to know something else about the experiments that you are conducting. Sì, eh, anche se è passata solo una settimana, yes. eh, io ho già finito. Even if it's only been a week, we've already completed in these past few days, this morning actually, an, an experiment. È un esperimento, è una dieta particolare per cercare di. An experiment that is a specific diet che avviene durante la permanenza nello spazio. Questo è uno degli esperimenti che. To define the bone loss that happens in space. There are many experiments that we will continue to do over the next six months. Another experiment will arrive with the ATV. Actually, several will arrive. One in particular, which is particularly interesting, that I'm waiting for, is our Italian experiment on combustion, green air, which will allow to light up in the furnace here on station some combustibles so that we may try to obtain some uh, clean combustions. So, very important and interesting experiments with immediate benefits. The entire world has seen your joy when you came into the space station. Is there something that really surprised you more than any other? Is it as you expected? Sicuramente il taglio di capelli del mio collega Chris Cassidy mi ha colpito. Surely my, uh, my uh, colleague's haircut, Chris Cassidy's, surprised me. No one knew. So I almost took it as a compliment. 
So he shaved his hair to, to welcome me, somebody with a, a bald head like me. And the other thing that strikes me is the atmosphere in station. It's, it's a very friendly atmosphere. Things around you may be intimidating or may seem cold and not welcoming, but, but the environment has been very welcoming. And it's a little bit like being in a hostel with some friends. And then the work environment is very particular. But, uh, but the feeling of finding yourself at home. Daniela Cipolloni from Wired. I would like to know if you think that uh, Italian industry in the future might be able to exploit better the International Space Station, and if so, how? Sicuramente tutte le agenzie mondiali possono utilizzare meglio la stazione. All world agency could utilize the ISS better. The time on ISS is, is very little. Only eight hours a day are not enough. And, but it's absolutely necessary for Italian industries and all industries to invest more into space. Space is our future, and of this we need to become aware that the sooner we do it, the better. ISS is, is entering this experimental phase. Usually we spend a lot of time in managing materials. And we're still learning how to how important it is to bring things up to station and down from station. So once we'll be able to exit this phase and, and enter a purely experimental phase, we'll be able to utilize better the station. Another way to use it even better is to have better distribution of information. There should be ways to make industries and universities understand how to step forward and, and propose how to use the resources that we have here. That concludes the event for today. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you. That concludes our event. ASI and media participants, Station, we are now resuming operational audio comms.